when could cardio affect your gains? Yeah. So I don't think we have a specific like cutoff of like, this is how much cardio you need to do. When we look at the data, it's that it doesn't, I think it's really important to make the distinction that cardio doesn't 100% blunt your hypertrophy. There is some, it does suggest that it might for, for trained individuals, it essentially slows the rate of it or it's a, like it's slightly less than what it would be if you were 100% weight training. Is that hit and also steady state sort of low There's a mix cardio. of that in the literature of what of what's impairing it the most. A lot of that has to do with the the, the high intensity stuff. The high intensity stuff's hard because the studies are so variable in what they use and the protocols they use, it's hard to necessarily say. Um but yeah, I think that it's it's a blend of both. Like there's some data to suggest like running is more fatiguing than cycling because there's a greater CNS or central nervous system fatigue from the running than the cycling. Um, and then like there is there is a meta analysis on the hit training that kind of shows that it might impact it. But then you look at the effect sizes and the protocols that they use in the order they did them in, and you're like, it probably actually doesn't really wash. Does out this to that. matter for the everyday? Person? Yeah, like the, like that, and it's the same thing with the, the cycle thing stuff and the interference stuff. I'm like, yeah, we might be seeing these small differences in the literature, but like the effect size of which it's happening is something that I think over time comes out in the wash. Or one thing that I think gets left out a lot of this stuff. My big thing is one: if you're going to do this hybrid concurrent training, the molecular interference of what's happening at the muscular level isn't my isn't my worry, right? Because it's not 100% blunting it. It's not turning it off entirely and you're never, ever going to grow muscle ever again. As in, just to break that down. Yeah. So the cardio stimulus mm -hmm. is affecting muscle protein synthesis. Is that what's happening? Yeah. So essentially when you, yeah, I kind of jumped right into this. When you do resistance training, the mechanical tension that comes from that resistance training signals this pathway that stimulates something called mTOR, which then turns on essentially muscle protein synthesis, creating new muscle tissue and developing that. But then endurance or cardio training, essentially the way that those signals are turned on in the body is that it creates an acute energy deficit in the muscle cells. This is one of the reasons that it's actually good for our health because it's creating this kind of energy deficit. And so that drives this, this cell signaling to turn on something called AMPK, which turns on PGC1 alpha, which leads to increased mitochondrial biogenesis and all those adaptations that we want from cardio training. But what happens in that process of that pathway is it, it blunts that mTOR signaling. So it essentially turns off or blunts or decreases the signaling to this the, the protein that's turning on muscle protein synthesis. And so that is true and that that is very real, but I think that it gets overblown by people to the extent of what that, that that's happening or you can program and make considerations for training around that. Mixed with, I think nutrition plays a huge status in this as well and what's it's leading to this. So we don't have these long-term studies of like, well, if you are doing both of these at the same time for chronic for chronic use, like how much is this actually blunting this versus how much are you fed versus the perfect balance out of across the week? Like we don't have this. This is just best coaching practices based off kind of understanding how the physiological systems work. Um, but the second component of that that is a little bit more of my take on it is there's this central nervous system fatigue that comes from endurance training that in turns reduces the quality of your lifting sessions because you're not able to essentially be as powerful. And then that might blunt and slow those gains and adaptations. And that's where I think balancing that across the week can manage that either by spacing things out across your day or doing things that are more important on different days, so you're rest and recovered be between those. And then the, the, self-signaling stuff isn't even necessarily becoming as much of an issue if you're planning things in a way where you're getting the signal that you want when you want it rather than, you know, meshing everything together. But we're seeing these hybrid athletes now who are doing both at very extreme high ends and making progress. I mean, there was that one guy, I can't remember, I think Adam Clink maybe might be his name, I don't remember. He did a 500 pound deadlift and ran a sub five minute mile on the same day, right? And you look at CrossFitters and people at these high ends of these spectrums doing these things who are very muscular and very strong. And I think they're rewriting our version and vision of what that looks like. But I think the important thing is that a lot of these people were strong and muscular before they started it. And I don't think we have data that says, okay, well, if you got strong and muscular first, is that cardio going to wither you away to nothing? And I think the answer is no. You can, you, but you kind of have to balance when you're focusing on these main and specific goals. And so I like to take something called a seasons approach of like, hey, my goal right now is to max my strength and hypertrophy. I'm not going to give up cardio. But yeah, I'm going to pull it down because I only have so much I can recover from in a single given week. But right here, right now, I really need to develop an aerobic fitness base. So I'm going to drive up that version of my training, but I'm still going to keep that minimum effective dose of strength and intensity within that here. So I'm not losing that fitness. And I like to think of hybrid fitness as like, 
it's a very long-term version of fitness, and I know that's hard for a lot of people to think of, is that you're not going up and down all the time. You're trying to build and stack over time. So your fitness is kind of like going small bits over time, but you're increasing both kind of in oscillation rather than I think a lot of people, well, I'm only going to run for this six months. Well, I'm only going to lift for this six months. Oh, but I'm going to go back to running. And the goal is to not ever give up one thing entirely, but maybe you're changing the percentage or the priority of that within your life based off your goals or your interest or potentially what you're really lacking and you need to be, de be developing. Do you think cardio should be done on a separate day mm -hmm. to strength training? If it's done on the same day, should it be before? Should it be afterwards? Yeah. So my rule of thumb is even when I'm training for my races, I always lift first. I always prioritize strength training first because I think that, you know, cardio training, especially in especially running, right, is going to be more fatiguing. And so it's giving this greater fatigue to your central nervous system, which is what you want for lifting. And it's more, de it depletes your glycogen stores more rapidly than resistance training. So my take is that you should lift first. Now, if you will not lift first, if you can only run first, if that's like the only thing that you can do, like it's, I know I have a lot of clients in the early summers, they're like, but I have to run before I lift because it's so hot. I'm like, you're still like, it's not no benefit. And I think that's where people get confused. They think that it's no benefit. It's just not optimal, but most of us aren't doing the optimal thing. But my, my view is to lift first, if you're gonna do them in the same session. And there was a paper that came out in, I think 2021, that found that if you separate the session by at least 20 minutes in advanced trainees that it reduced the impact on one rep max strength. And then for beginners and intermediate trainees, it didn't matter if you did them back to back on, on that effort. And then there's other, you know, data that suggests that you can separate them by two, three, six, eight hours. So generally I say strength first, cardio after, or strength in the morning, cardio in the afternoon, or switch them if you need to, card in the afternoon, strength in the evening, put that space between. And then if you're gonna do them in the same day or the same session, that's where I think we need to be more focused on nutrition too. If it's greater than 60 minutes for you to do both, probably take in some carbohydrate while you're doing that, or at least making sure that you're very well fed before the session. And then if you're doing them split across the day, making sure you have enough protein and carbs to recover between those two sessions. And then otherwise, you know, Take If not, if you have someone, and I don't think most people need to double up that often. I think most people, what, they might strength train three days a week and do cardio three or four days a week. You can probably do it all on their own. Um, but if you're going to do them, then back to back. I like doing, you know, my hard lifting session with my speed work days, potentially, if I don't have a ton of rest days in my week and a lot of wiggle room with putting more intensity later on. Um, but then there's also the take of people do their hard lifting day and then their easy cardio session after, and they save their hard day for its own workout entirely. I don't think either of those are necessarily incorrect or wrong, but then you might want to put that hard cardio session and that hard leg session, so to speak, because usually they're both lower dom body dominant. Maybe having 48 hours, like an, an easy day between them or a rest day between them so that you can get the most out of those training sessions. And that's where that balancing that intensity across the week is helpful. Instead of having every day be your high intense day, well, what days are my, my highest intensity days? What sessions do I care about the most? So during, you know, when I'm, I'm race training, I will move my speed work day from slowly being after my strength training session to being on its own day. Cause I know that I start to care more about that quality of that session and I will put something easier there. But when I don't really care about things as much, I might slap them together a little bit more. And I think it really de depends as well. How many sessions are people doing in a week? Are they only lifting two days, three days, four days? Are they doing cardio a couple days of week? Or are they actually having high volume cardio goals? And if we center it back to those gen pop people that were really focusing here, most of it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, there was a paper that just came out looking at middle-aged people on like doing concurrent training back to back. Um, and they both improved health and it didn't appear to in interfere with each other, at least in, the, in this middle-aged population. So I think for the gen pop people, the risk versus reward becomes less and less compared to just like the value of them getting it in and getting get it, it done. In. Yeah. yeah.